and I reckon we can do it. But I need to come and give your hand to work. Yeah. Um, keen to be my right, uh, folks, thank you all very much. We're going to bring the meeting back to order and take ourselves to page 538, recommendation to adopt the Otago Civil Defence Emergency Management Agreement. Kia ora, Matt, welcome. Kia ora. I think I've met everyone here. For those, um, Matt Allen, Group Manager from EM Otago. Uh, just here today to formalise partnership arrangements for the seat of activity within Otago. Um, happy to treat the paper as read and just answer any questions that you may have. Easy. Christian Stokes. That's 578. No, it's not. Any questions, anybody? Yeah, Shirley here. I just had one question about the uh, proposed agreement timing and whether there was any potential to um, put a review in there somehow. Ten years is a long time. Yeah, if I can speak to that briefly. Um, there's four reasons for that. Um, the first one being an alignment of the group plan, which is our long term planning document. At the moment, that is in from 2018 to 28. Um, we've also had long term planning considerations for council. Um, you'll see that there is a right of review, um, or if someone wants to opt out, an 18 month period for that. That is for annual planning considerations as well. Uh, and the, the fourth category for that is obviously. Um, uh, employment staff. So if we start looking at changing or, or relitigating this arrangement, that has flow on implications around employment as well. So that was, and you're quite right, that that, that is part of the rationale behind um, that period of time. Thank you. Any other questions, Dan? Good job you didn't drive from Dunedin to be here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like to move A, B, C, and D? I oh, yeah. Thank you. Stu, seconded Tracy. All those in favour? Oh, Aye. Yeah. Against Carrie. Thanks, Matt. Brilliant. Thanks for your time. That jumps us now to page 569 and the NLTP Roving Improvements Program. Thank you, Pete. No, it's uh, <laughs> Stu's. Stu's. Ah, and that's Stu's. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to make it <laughs> easy step for the next one. <laughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> Good. Well done. Thank you. I'll take the report as it's been read. Um, just one note recommendation B. Um, it's not supposed to be that that was an error. It's just the A recommendation. So I'll follow you for that. So council approved a 6.45 million dollar roading improvement program in the 2021-24 long-term plan um, to be subsidised from the Waka Kotahi low cost, low risk work category. On the 7th of September uh, 2021, Waka Kotahi advised that they approved a roading improvements program up to the total value of 4.3 million for that period. Um, that's 2.1 million less than was included in the 2021 long-term plan. As Waka Kotahi did not approve all of the requested program, this leaves a local share of 49% that could be used for unsubsidised improvements to a total value of 1.034 million. The remaining, um, so we've worked through um, a number of the um, projects that were not Waka Kotahi, and the discussion um, talks to some of them being able to be included in the current program and bundled with other pieces of work as part of that. There is three remaining projects which have no subsidy, which is the new footpath cycleways at $100,000 per year, the Nichols Ultra Street path improvements, and the Mulvey Point Road seal extension. The um, following projects have since um, been raised with Council and, and put forward um, based on changes to the network handle circumstances since the original improvements program was built. And that's around the Cornish Point Road seal extension and Bendigo Loop seal extension. And they've both talked to in the report. Um, so I will hand back to the chair for any questions. Yeah, there's been a bit of a discussion regarding, I guess, roading budgets in general and come through the next issue. But has anyone else got any 
things I'd like to bring up, probably especially about steel extensions or footpaths. Yeah, I'm going to start, Stuart. I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, firstly, the, the data on Maori Point doesn't really help us because the months are all different over a number of years. And I know we don't have road counters all over the place, but it's still not really huge numbers to warrant the cost. And I worked out at the, I know we're only talking about design works at this stage, but using the same figures that were for the sealing of Cornish Point, it's going to be about 2 million bucks to seal the road with 126 movements a day to save 45 grand a year. And that's not that simple, but it's a huge investment when you compare it to what our current costs are. And I also look at a loop road and I had a friend years ago who won a couple of grand in lotto so they bought a $10,000 sports car and that didn't make sense to me because they were only $8,000 down and I'm seeing $200,000 being offered here to do eco seal to solve those people's problems with dust which will help our problem with the maintenance but we don't have to take that under our wing typically we do but that's in an instance you know this this is kind of a bespoke case where so I can see it, the people who come to us said there's a whole lot of dust caused here, it's not good for the brakes or whatever, the workers, um, we want to eat those seal it. And now we're looking at a half a million thrown on top of it. I'm just, I'm going to need some convincing that this is the right way to go ahead. And I, and I just, and again, it's not the same, but I wonder what signal we're sending to the Maniatoto when we're saying here's a couple of roads that we're going to steal when you've got bridges that aren't working. Can I? Can I Please. Um, so, Waka Katahi choose what they'll fund by aligning it to what the government's priorities are. Sealed roads are never going to get sealed in the list. The Mary Grant Road hasn't been sent to date this because it's an audit. Not as high as you can achieve um, places. Um, Bendigo Lake Road was eco-sealed. That would provide um, a solution to the dust problem. Um, one of my concerns from the asset management perspective is, is it's actually creating quite a high cost for you in the future because um, it's not being built to the standard of steel seal road and you're going to have to, when it's at the end of its life, it's going to have quite a short life compared to a seal extension of about um, maybe 10 to 15 years. And you're then going to be expected to fund <coughs> the reinstatement of that eco seal. So if you look at it from a depreciation perspective, it's actually probably high compared to a seal extension, which is over a much longer life. The pavement on a seal extension, I think we're assigning about 100 years to the central tango. The servicing would be about 15 years. Um, so if you look at it for an annual cost, um, the seal extension gives you a better whole of life cost than the, um, the eco seal. That's fine, but the justification for doing Bimago Loop is to assist not road safety, not the numbers of people, not our own costs, but the dust suppression some day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would have got an offer of two hundred thousand, but it's a good chunk of coin to take that offer through. So, so there's three choices: one, go with the eco cell, and I take the point. It says five to eight to eight to ten years, but you know, in a relatively short period of time, you're talking infrastructure. Somebody's going to have to rebuild it whether it's us or them, but I guess it isn't as simple as it's still our road, so we're going to have to bring it up to some standard because when it goes still falls to bits, it falls to bits properly. Or we'll we'll do nothing. We're still 500 grand up on fixing a problem that isn't ours. In a, in a um, sphere of the business that's under some fairly big pressure at the moment. And that's, you know, I've mentioned the many Toto bridges and I know that we need a strategy, but that strategy, no matter what it is, it's going to cost a lot of money to implement. We know our bridges are coming out. We've got two cycle clip-ons or situations here and applied that I, I would put the, the need to deal with the Alex bridge or applied bridge in terms of the cycle traffic is a far higher priority than stopping dust getting on brakes. Just my view. Sorry, Nigel. So if we chose not to do that, that funding is unsubsidized could be spent somewhere else if we chose, correct? Um, yes, can. Um, 
So, so just in terms of both the client and the outside of British clients, the design will be undertaken this financial year for those. Um, they probably have a good chance of getting more Kakatani subsidy for those projects. And so I absolutely hear what you're saying, Tim, about the urgency around them. We wouldn't be able to get them done this year no. anyway. They'd be next one to, or they'd be at one year three of our three year plan. Um, and I think you'd probably have quite a good chance to get them. Adam Walker Patani are funding the um, investigation. So you, if you want to get bang for your buck, um, probably those two cycle bridges um, are not the ones. Um, and likewise, um, so I'm not it, sorry, this way you're on the bridges. I'm not saying that we're going to spend a half million dollars on the bridges now because we can't, they're not designed. But if we don't get, and we've relied on Waka Kotati before, it's part of how we're in this situation. <laughs> if we don't get that money, gee, we're not still a half million dollars tucked in our back pocket. And I guess the question to that is, what are the consequences of not doing it in this financial year anyway? So just to clarify, in terms of cash flow, this money that we're talking about here would come in at year three. Mm. Um, the, it's not actually available in the LTP till year three, so it's not going to be in the next financial year. We've already put the program mm. next year was approved by, uh, well, so it's only year three. You can consider um, spend it um, and you wanted to understand the bridge information a bit more, you would have that information just before this money actually becomes available for you to spend anyway. Um, I would suggest Cornish Point Road is going to get nothing to do with I just wondered, given that walking and cycling is such a priority for the current government, did Waka Kotahi give any feedback as to why they declined that um, money that was specifically for walking and cycling? So uh, walking and cycling was very heavily oversubscribed in terms of the applications for the funding that was available. So they have, they have uh, the government policy statement sets out sums of money to go to different with them regarding the availability of more walking and cycling money, particularly around things like the clip-ons onto the bridges. Um, they, they have said that it's very unlikely to be available within this three-year period. However, we have projects shown ready and uh, other, other organisations don't get the projects delivered on time. There could potentially be money freed up. Um, so if we didn't see all Bendigo Loop Road and instead put that money into what we had anticipated would be done under the walking and cycling, what would that get us? Because that was one of the So there was, yeah, there was three hundred thousand dollars a year for new footpaths and cycleways that's that district wide. And then the Nepal Sultra Street path improvements as well um that our Alpha to the mall, the, yeah, yeah, so was the, aside from Nepal Sultra Street, it was just to bits and bobs, different places, fixing yeah. up hazards and... And I think that's probably why that um, application was unsuccessful because you've got to, when you put up funding applications, you've got to provide a lot of detail on exactly where that money is being spent and anywhere where we put sums of money in to gradually address a number of issues across the district, none of those projects got funded. But doesn't mean that those things yeah. don't still need to doesn't mean they don't exist. It's just yeah. we should have given a list and said explain in more detail. Because <clears throat> I think for me, the priority would be people in wheelchairs and pushing prams should be able to do so safely on all of our footpaths over dust suppression on Bendigo Loop Road for vineyards. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it possible to use those that um, but funding and loading and going to bridges? Look, I would be suggesting that you, um, if you didn't feel comfortable allocating the other 500000 now, that you, um, it's because it doesn't come up in the budgets until year three, you, you could be sitting here in 12 months time having this conversation with a bit more information around um, what the bridges, are, the points on the bridge is going to cost, what, what the situation with the bridges in general is, um, where the locations are that there are gaps in footpaths or drop crossings needing to be constructed, and then you can consider a, a more robust program. 
So what does that leave us? Yeah. 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 First. Just noting that um, it's a lever that we can't change it now, but when you get to year three, which is our general rate, so I can't just kind of go, I've got this which way I want, it has to still be part of that activity which could be broken as well in the waiver. Yes, as long as it's in road. If you generally don't believe you're going to use it, then I would encourage you obviously next year to do a manual test. We'll use it, we'll use it. And noting it doesn't directly impact the rates. The rates in the true sense because it is a big capital. Well, it does, but it doesn't. If you don't have it in there, you're not going to, <coughs> you don't save it in the same way. Or you might actually won't do because there's no subsidy. It was just, so I, I talked to Kim about this and it was yeah. different around the interest cost. Um, yeah. That's the only portion that would actually affect rates, which is, is ongoing depreciation. Is, is minimal in the grand scheme of yeah. the full value. Yeah, so it's not like we don't spend a million dollars for that and we can go back and look again and plan again. No. Which is what went through my mind at the last flight this morning. No, no, no. Hopefully, I can get a good sleep then. Now, so I've got scared in the paper. The Maori Point Road seal extension, which has been contentious for a long, long time. My understanding, Maori Point Road is a shortcut because people predominantly in four wheel drives know that it's faster for them to go through there than on the main highway. Do we have any concerns around if we were to seal that road, then you're putting more traffic onto it and diverting them away from what are very safe intersections at the corner of Terrace there and putting more traffic onto intersections that are not particularly safe for high volume traffic pulling out onto state highways? Because that one by the bridge is dodgy and the one on the other side, if you have got traffic, large volume traffic turning in on right after a blind corner. I don't know that we actually want to do that. I, I think there's also um, opportunity to look at where the Murray Point Road or whether most of the traffic. But is it through traffic or is it people that are living on the road coming backwards or forwards on this part of the road? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, look, it's, it's been um, that difficult just for a long time. Mm. Anyone else? So, that basically, how do we move on from here if we decide not to proceed with the Mary Point Road? It's only under investigation anyway, isn't it? It was designed as design investigation with the remaining value after quadruple. So, if we even move the re recommendation, that's still only going to be the design and investigation. We're not committing to doing that to seal, though, with that seal extension. It's still 134. Well, yeah, well, how do we do that if we're not going to do it? So then. I haven't, I haven't seen the case strong enough yet. Oh, I haven't either. Through the mountain track, where the speeds of the tunnel. So, do we, how do we write a, How do we write a? Could we move potentially if there isn't an appetite to seal Bendigo Loop Road? Could we move from option two the three hundred thousand dollars for footpaths and cycleway? <coughs> or potentially you're looking for nine hundred thousand dollars to do the footpath on Nepal Street. What you could do is you could approve the first bullet point, and you could add. Um, Consider and three twenty four. That that extent of seal that would be a benefit from Mary Point Road because I, you know, do you go and design a seal extension for the whole road? If you're never going to seal the whole. If you don't think you're going to put up five million dollars in the next LTP to seal the narrow point road, then doing a design for sealing the narrow point road doesn't really make sense. It might be that you say, well, we would do one K to achieve a lot of benefit, and we could go away and put more traffic cows out to understand. Um, no, you would be the a property owners might do it. Yes, well, yeah, that's my thought too. Possibility. Yeah. Could we it? spend five million dollars if they would potentially then? You know, if something happens there and someone else is spending a billion dollars on infrastructure there, no, and we've just spent time. Can I just clarify? Am I right in thinking that the Bendigo <coughs> owners are going to spend two hundred thousand dollars anyway? 
that's they're, they're pushing for treatment and they're willing. They, they're, going to, they're going to do that treatment unilaterally. It would have to be it's council's right, so it would have to be, of course, with the approval of council. Yeah, but but, but that, that that's what they'll be seeking. If any. Correct. They'll be seeking the ecosystem. Yeah. We don't lose. That. No. Thank you. We created a very serious liability in 10, 12 years time, which will inevitably be ours. Look, at, at the worst, it's going to cost you another no, $150,000, um, which is probably still cheaper than the 500000 So where are we at? Well, I reckon, <coughs> look at the motions, you reckon B shouldn't be there anyway to be yeah, correct, sorry, that was So we would have A, and then C would become B, but it would say, prove the following unsubstantive unsubsidised and it would simply be 400,000 for Cornish Point because I think we're all in agreement Cornish Point needs done. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then what Julie said, um, the remainder of the 23-24 program be reconsidered June 23 with further information to come. We can just leave it at that because you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, because yeah. we just want to leave it open so that we can look at other things. Okay. I'm going to say I've got a, a, a recommendation. Uh, reconsider the remaining parts of the unsubsidised improvements program for 2023, 24 in June 2023. Yeah, that sounds. Yep, I'm going to that. Yeah. Uh, do we have to declare to um, the UTA that we've got that money just gone? No. They don't, we don't have to do that. Like they're not going to turn around and say, well, you guys didn't do this. No. Okay, cool. You, you're under no obligation to just spend on what you put up to them because they didn't fund it. Can that make sure you can choose So have you moved that? I've moved that. And the second for that? Yeah. Can I see? Oh, okay. True, true, true. <laughs> um, first, I'm going to receive the report and its significance. I'm going to move to that, Nigel. Second, Tracy. And secondly, Tim's recommendation. Second by Tracy. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, cool. 20. Point uh, 22.4.12 bridge strategy, and I'd like Julie uh, first of all to remove uh, recommend the report be accepted in its level of significance. So move that. Ian, second it. Cheryl, thank you, and uh, welcome, Julie. And this is a pretty big report, and it's been pretty contentious or talked about for a long time. So I'd be very interested to have a discussion. Thank you. Um, so I, I do apologise to the members. It's Probably the longest report in my 10 years here that I've ever put in front of a council. But I had intended to bring one of the inspection reports for you. It's that thick, and that's just one of the three reports that came in. So there's a lot of information to go through to condense down, and I thought it was important that you understood the key points from those inspections. Um, so, council has 176 bridges and five foot bridges. Um, we've had 187 structural inspections. Up in the past 15 months. There's 37 bridges that still require a special extended work for the final most and to have got bridges. Those um, 37, while it's a small number, um, they are they tend to be the biggest, most significant bridges. And the reason they need special access is because they're big and they can't get in and look underneath them very well. So they need to either get um, equipment that sits on the bridge that hangs over the side with them so they can get in underneath and look at sails, drones, some of them are um, miller slack requires a dive inspection of the piers. Mm -hmm. So um, they tend to be relatively expensive and I'd like to be able to give you an expected cost of what they are, but I, I can't actually give that other than to say, you know, it, it's likely to be significant. It could be ten to twenty thousand dollars per bridge on average, you know, um, but we can get some more information on what those costs will be. But yeah, we're talking hundreds of thousands, not tens of thousands to do those. Um, so the, um, the inspections in total have resulted in four bridges being closed. So I think everybody's um, well aware of the Scots name, the Coburn River Bridge, and that is actually the bridge that has sections missing, not that one below it in the report, which was the Money Trader Road, Torrey River Bridge. Um, so I think there's a high level of awareness of the closure of those two bridges, um, but there were another two that actually were closed as well. So one of those is um, the side, it was a side from the Road down as you head down um, to Race Junction. Um, 
it was just a funny little bridge that kind of was a, um, a legacy bridge from when, I think it might have been when the state highway was realigned. Um, so it's actually, or there was a realignment done in the safety improvement. There's actually access to that property. So um, with the agreement of and discussions with the property owner, that bridge was actually removed because it was quite unsafe. Um, and Craigroy Road Bridge, so Craigroy Road is um, in the Nevis Valley, and as you drop down into the into the valley and where the Nevis Crossing is, you actually turn off to the left and go up the, the this side of the Nevis River. Um, and there's a station that um, is in there, and this bridge provides access into there. Um, it's it's typically used mostly by the landowner, so they have asked that we leave the bridge there for them to put the sheep across, but it's um, got gates on it locked that they they can't access. So there are, um, in addition to that, um, two bridges are restricted to light vehicles, and another requires. Green Rhymes is down the very end of the sticks. It was closed initially, um, but subsequently reopened. It only ever had light vehicle access on it anyway, so it's not actually a lot post on that head. It needs to have some work done on it in order for it to The Nevis Road Bridge at Stewart's Creek is, is into the Nevis Valley a bit further from the crossing. It's not the first bridge you come to, it's the next one. There is quite a decent fort beside it. There are about 25 fords in the Nevis Valley, mm -hmm. so um, the interim, the media closure of that's not caused a lot of issues. However, um, if with a bit of scour um, reinstatement work, that bridge could be um, reopened and also protected and kept for the future. We wouldn't need to replace it. It's, it's, it's a bit of repair work that's needed. Um, so eight bridges have also been identified as needing um, replacement. Um, in the next few years, they've kind of got issues that would be um, a sufficient number of structural members are now compromised to the point that you can't go in and just repair one bit of it and it'll be fine. The whole thing is, is now not in a good state. Um, so a list of those bridges um, down there, um, what Lindbergh runs is one of those. Um, so they are probably more concerned because they're going to need to be ultimately replaced as not on the life or very low. Um, so you know top of being all the quite work identified by the structure on them, I've listed them there. Um, McNally Road, Colburn um, Red Valley, uh, that had some scout protection work done up some rock became available to us in the valley um, and that work's been completed but the work on the other six down hasn't been done yet. The information that comes from the structural engineers doesn't give us enough detail to be able to say to the contractor he go away and advise this. It'll tell us that this is wrong but it doesn't give us any methodology around how to fix it and it's specialist enough that it's not something we can do internally so we actually need to bring the structural engineers back and pay them some more money to to give us that kind of information so then we can give that to the contractors and get a price to understand are these very expensive jobs or are they um, not so expensive. But there can be sometimes it can be things like um, the joints need to be redone on the Miller's Flat Bridge. I think it is, you know, we know from the Clyde Bridge that that's actually quite a complicated job. It's, it's a very small sentence, but it can be quite a lot of money. Um, and another one that is a concern is the Little Valley Bridge where the deck needs, we know that the deck needs replacing and we have had prices, uh, we've had a price of $900,000 for a particular type of deck but I, I'm not, I don't have enough information provided to me to be able to identify if that's to do the work or just provide the materials. Um, we had another price of $1.8 million to hardwood to replace the deck but that is one of the bridges that needs special access inspections and so the reason I put that diagram in there is um, you wouldn't go in and replace the deck to then find out that the beams need replacing. And, and sometimes the programs we get will say to do that. They'll say, oh, the deck needs replacing urgently, but within five years you need to replace the beams. So it actually requires someone to sit down and apply um, um, So um, 
that where, where I came to as I worked through all this is there's a big program of work ahead. There's options when you replace bridges. You don't always have to put another bridge that's exactly the same length. There might be a lower cost option. In some of these places, there might be sufficient detours available that even if we were able to put in some kind of a structure that was available for most of the time, but in high water, high level, river water levels, you, you took another route. Um, that, that's a viable option on um, subsidiary creeks and streams, perhaps not on the Tauri River or the main Kiriki River. Um, so we need to do a bit of work actually looking and saying, what are there other viable alternatives for these? Now, to be realistic, there's not really that viable an alternative for um, the Manitoto Bright Bridge or Scotts Lane. That they're going to have to have another bridge built. And the Scotts Lane Bridge alone, look, I don't keep an estimate on it, but I, I know enough to know that our 1.45 million of capital funds that are available are not going to replace the Scotts Lane Bridge. It's, it's going to be multiple millions of dollars. Um, if it's 1.8 million just to put a deck across Little Valley, um, you're not going to get this thing. What, what I'm proposing is that um, rather than council try to make decisions on, we've got a lot of data, but you haven't really got enough information to make some good decisions. Is that we actually, actually over the next um, six to nine months, actually collating the mis filling in the gaps of that information, um, paying the, expert, the experts to come in and do that work. And you will see from the report that there is a budget for structural inspections, but we've actually spent all of that. So that's why some of that other work hadn't got done. I think it's better to reallocate funding that might have got spent on maintenance or renewals into collecting a, a full picture. So then we can um, put up a really good program to Waka Katahi um, to get funding for work that's required from 2024 and also um, to help inform the discussions with that community that are going to need to happen around um, the community funding this year of this. There is a possibility that Waka Katahi might fund all of these bridges. Um, they, and we, we really won't know that until we put the application in and they, um, they tell us. But, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of them don't get funded. They have to be done unsubsidised. Um, Surely when you say funded, you mean 50% funded? Yeah, yeah. So either way, there's still a conversation to have with the community because they'll fund the other 49 So the, um, the bridge that is at, at most has the greatest level of urgency around it at the moment is um, the bridge 145, which is the money to down across the um, Tauri River. Um, and the reason for that is that it is closed and it's really unsafe. Um, it shouldn't be being used. So I have had a conversation with the, um, the affected farmer. There's other landowners affected too, but the farmer in particular, um, who farms both sides of the river, um, he had got prices for a Bailey bridge. Um, he's prepared to fund half the cost of the Bailey bridge. Now it's not going to be cheap because it's um, if, if we put Bailey Bridge on the road, it's actually $4,600 per month for the hire that is the quote that he's got. We need to do a bit more um, follow up on that to see if we can get it cheaper than he could have done. That, that, that's not a given um, because they're hired from Wapa Patahi, so I don't know whether we get the Brent's rate and he gets the farm. And there'll be establishment costs as well. So he's prepared to pay half. It's still going to be quite a sum of money to fund, but I think given the scale of the problem that exists, um, it's probably money well spent to buy the time to be able to make some really good decisions around this, because I suspect that this is possibly going to be one of the, um, the biggest issues mm -hmm. when you go to do the 2020. How do we, how do we start that? So I've given um, an outline. And, um, so um, of course, my role is changing slightly. So um, Neil is going to have the joyous job <laughs> from me. <laughs> but um, what we're 
Look, look, it absolutely needs some dedicated oversight within council. We've just been struggling resource wise. Um, we can appoint a project manager to this and has um, we don't want to that we're upset of just working on this. Um I get out in the appendix what this you can see there's quite a lot of work to do there. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's enough yeah. to go there. I haven't put any timelines or anything on it at this point because we need to have the consultants um, and the project manager will start working through that. The report the recommendations in the report are to um, allow us to recalculate <laughs> The maintenance and the capital funding to um, deal with the urgent issue of the of bridge 145, um, and also to um, prioritise the collection of the information that we need to enable us for decisions to be made around priorities. There might be things that we can do that would would say, well, it's not going to save the bridge long term, but it would give me another three to five years even. I mean, I guess, and I've been a bit involved in the wall. We've got to in the public eye as much as anything to see that we're making progress and trying to look for solutions to buy us time. Because there's going to be times about the slow time of funding, which everyone scums up. Um, and I feel we probably aren't getting listened to enough from Wellington or Wakata, whether we've got a strong enough story, but we'll get that information as we get the information. But uh, it just feels a bit like, yeah. I guess every district's the same. We're not getting enough capital for the infrastructure. And I don't want to be a part of a council that's not looking for 30 year plans and infrastructure down the road. I and mean, that's what we're here for. That's what we do, whether it's spatial plans, but bridges are the same. Uh, but we'll be fighting against our neighbours for the same funding applications, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and look, what I would say is in the road sector of New Zealand, they're known as being actually pretty and pretty good asset management in terms of relative to the rest of the um, infrastructure sector in New Zealand. However, bridges is the blind spot in writing. We don't have the same tools available for us to hold the information and analyse the information that we have for the likes of roads. And so that ability to look at a long term at what needs to be done um, has, has been missing and also um, people are busy focusing on the road because that's always the issue that the um, re residents are making the noise about. The bridges have kind of been the, um, the hidden um, thing in the background until it gets closed, and of course, everybody knows all about it. So, would what could totally ever fund more than our 50%, 49%, 51%? Um, that, that would be very unlikely because they, they so that the 51% assistant rate and they have a national policy on, on them and how they there are some councils in New Zealand that get higher than a 50 minus yeah, I, they, I think that is on um, social economic value, values and so I think for example Clue the district council gets a higher subsidy rate than us because they have a lower social or they have a lower high deprivation index than central Otago So most councils in New Zealand, I think 75% of the councils get 51% um, and 25% get higher than 51%. So just looking forward, and I know I'm looking down at K, for example, that the only way that we can achieve the results that we want to achieve over the long term if these bridges are coming at us as to have a, a, a targeted rate. Um, so I very specifically put that resolution in because I've heard that, that um, the messages that come to me from elected members that we need to start considering the funding mechanisms around us. So, um, you know, that count, count to, was about 25 years ago, I think, this council went to districtise funding for roading because it doesn't matter where you live in the district, roading is some, it, it's such a community thing. I think it's, it's, yeah, I mean, that is going to be a political decision for you, you to have a debate about when you come to do the 2024 long term plan. How do, you, how do you rate your bridges, for example, and what's the um, equity across the community with regards to those? You know, because I know the rural sector will argue 
some other had some other arguments around that he could have done something. Yeah, yeah, but they raised different ways that we got and, 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 and balanced it. I said so they can bring up other rates that we've got or probably we they could say don't um benefit them as much as other people. Yeah. And, and so that's why I think that data, we need to take a bit of time to collect that data and actually understand that <coughs> what the implications are of different ideas for different types of properties, like we do when we do a lot of plan and, and rating changes, so that be an informed conversation. And I'm consultation. On that, when we made the direct appointment of Becca to do this work and some of the advantages that were supposed to come out of that was to progress analysis and design work and to enable construction of renewals to commence earlier, how satisfied are you that Becca had kept up their end of the bargain and what's the quality and timeliness of the reporting like? That's a very good question, isn't it? Look, I'm, I'm confident that Becca did a job of what we asked them to do. I think um, we perhaps didn't understand what we were asking them to do. Bridge and tell us what the issues are. They've certainly gone out and inspected the bridge and told us what the issues are. What we actually wanted to know is then tell us how to fix those issues and give us a detailed methodology um, on how to do that. Because we're now looking at a third. Is this the third report on bridges in the last four or five years? We've already had three in the last 15 months. Because yeah. um, there so was another one in 2017. Was that a desktop exercise? Oh, so the, in 2017, uh, we did an internal. So um, at that time, we had an engineer called Scott Graham and myself, even set up in it. Um, he went out and looked at all of the bridges and he gave a pretty good based a desktop analysis that these bridges are actually starting to look pretty dodgy and um, they're coming to the end of their life and within the next 30 years sort of 30 bridges are going to need to be replaced I think was the headline at that time. Um, we identified again that we needed to put some resources and specialists look into that and of course in that since that period of time we've had a really unstable workforce within the voting area and um, still struggling to get people to get people. And I think that probably my concern is that in five years we've had a lot of reports yeah. and not a lot of solutions. Yeah, so I think what happens is you get um, a writing manager in and they're trying to deal with everything. Um, whereas if we've got just one of our um, project managers from our capital projects team on this, this is all they've got to worry about. They don't they don't deal with um, things with funding and reports to councils and anything else. They just work on this. <coughs> Um, I guess we're in this situation now with, um, with um, there's a massive amount of money that is going to have looking forward um, and we, you know, welcome on anyone who's sitting around this table or probably in this room. How do we set stuff up now so that as these bridges get replaced, how do we, is there anything that we can do to try and um, soften the blow so that in X amount of years if, if there's even a local council at that stage, but that so we don't see the same mistakes repeated again. So we can actually have that. I don't know whether it's money ring fence that actually so that this doesn't happen. So it, it's called depreciation. Yeah, I know <laughs> depreciation, but didn't we just wasn't it, now? Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't the, the bridges weren't being depreciated? We've just started. There's only just started, haven't we? That's correct. But we're already at the end of their life, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes. Yeah. 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 So I guess yeah. but we can't. Talk about previous people who sat around the council oh, table. Oh. <laughs> so that's so that that's how we're going. That's going to be the way of fixing that. Um, look, I think to be fair, legislation regarding depression. You know, some of these bridges are coming after home. Oh, exactly. Well. You know, it's only been in the last maybe 10 to 15 years that depreciation has been a thing. So it would have been a. It was certainly not going to go have enough to replace all the bridges at one time. No, um, no, I know. Yeah, but look, there are there are things coming out now that um, would help us um, to do better project, uh, better asset management on bridges. And I think it's become, this is a, we are not the only council in this situation. In fact, when you go anywhere in New Zealand, like in a rural area on holiday and read the local papers and um, the headlines, issues with the bridge, something. Um, you know, uh, oh, sorry. 
Yeah, it really follows Tracy's point to an extent, and without anticipating what will know no better in six to nine months. You suspect that what's going to, is going to show is that there's a scale of investment required that is well beyond any rating capacity of this council, and and somewhere along the line, you suspect there should be a political message going back to the government saying, "Here we are, a rural council. This is the basic infrastructure that makes our economy and our community work, and and there's a scale of, of investment here that it is." Beyond our scope, and 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 that needs to be a, a message that is built into the future of local government work or whatever, because there's just reading that, there's just no way we've got the capital access to the capital that's going to deal with this problem. So, um, that's through this um, but. Yeah. I think that the, the, the concern really is that that message needs to go back, that even if you're funding 49%, home loan still needs to be funding the other 51%. And, and that's my fear at the moment, is that um, they're going to say, well, we've got this much for bridges. Across New Zealand, you've asked for this much. Um, so, so these are the ones we're doing, and you guys will have to sort out the others. That's what I was saying. We, somewhere there needs to be a message going back, this is a, more than a an individual council's capacity to cope with, because it's clearly that's what that's what's going to show up. Yeah, and look, I think um, I think the regional man transport committee and maybe the mayor's mm -hmm. rural and provincial mayor's collectively um, should should consider whether that's a decision that they. That needs to be a message, like what I said um, this morning about comms to people. People actually need, to, you know, regardless of, to our community, we need to tell our community to just be upfront. This is where we're at. It's going to be multiple millions of dollars. That it's not possible. Exactly what we've just said within our capacity right now to rate for that. Um, you're going to have to just trust that we're moving forward. Because otherwise, you, they, we can't give them set dates. We need to tell them that we can't give them a set date. Um, and as soon as that does become available, we need to get. But that's the message that needs to go out to our communities. Because they're getting shitty because we're not telling them um, what the situation is. It's, Once they know, they can. It's going to be another six or nine months before you can quantify it. Yep. But I think that that um, resolution L gives us the ability to go back to um, to have people um, on the spot so I can say mm. that this isn't going to happen um, until if, 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 if it is able to happen in 2024. And then Stephen, or Tim, who next? Who is it? It's just the complexity of it, too, is because I've worn a lot of criticism, and that's fair enough. It's part of the job, or we'll complain part of it, please. But, but we've got a problem that's this long, and that's chronologically, but we can't just go galloping in and fix absolutely everything at the start of the problem because that's just ignoring the colossal width and breadth and length of the rest of it. So, whilst I can absolutely understand the, the, the Frustration and, and particularly for the Pattersons out at, out at the tide. Um, and you know, it would have been good if the Bailey Bridge had been looked at a year ago, but well, here we are, we're going to move on with it. Um, but Wellington needs to get the clear message twofold. You know, what do you say today? How much is a tanker full of milk work for the country? Good of a million dollars, sort of equivalent to 150,000 dollars a reload of sheep. Yeah, so that's what's going over the roads that, that is coming into the, not just our economy, but the New Zealand economy. And maybe 51% isn't enough of it. And also can't help but reflect on when they made the unilateral decision to lift the axle weight to 50 ton. You know, how good was that for our bridges that they didn't sort of say, well, oh, is this going to cause you a problem? So a lot of this falls at Wellington. And and of course, we've also got the constant specter of climate change and what that's going to do with our bridges that's really going to have to be taken into account. Because where a bridge might have worked in the 50s, may well not do into the future. So there's a hell of a lot. You know, I've just printed off the, the report on its own and sent it to somebody who's been fairly vocal in their determination to both you and I that the problem needs solved now. So have a read of it. I'd encourage any members of the public to do it. Have a read of that, which is an exceptionally good report. Have a read of it and find out just how hard this is. Because it isn't going to be fixed tomorrow. And, and there's a complexity to it. And every step that we take wrong in this is going to cost by a factor of how, you know, it's a big cost every time we start with that by 10%. There's going to be millions. So we've got to get this right. And that means planning right at the front end. So we need to crack on with it.
And look, I, I know that there's been suggestions that we could put box collars in places in there. And, and I have been in this district long enough to have been out there following the floods, seeing the box collars smashed up down the river because it got washed away. So those floods aren't going to stop happening. So you need to make sure that what we put in there is going to stay there and be resilient enough to deal with the increased flooding that's expected to happen as well. Um, you know, we, we can look at low cost, but we also need to be resilient. Of those 17 that have already been identified as needing high priority work and we've done one, is there any other work in those 16 that can be progressed in um, look, the foreseeable the future? Yeah, and so as we start to get that, that would be one of the first lot. Just, um, sorry, Stephen, first, then, I was just thinking, well, basically, it's what Tim said. We do need to get ahead of the game, and that to me is we probably need to have a target of the break. We need to employ someone in a specialist position to drive this project. Mm -hmm. but my, but my, then I started to think about what you said about borrowing. So, are you, are you anticipating that we're going to borrow money to use towards the 50% funding we're going to get to all the fertility. Is that what you're saying? Um, it's got to be paid back. But. Look, oh, and look, I'm not the corporate services yeah, manager who works out how to raise the money, but um, certainly <clears throat> borrowing money to um, fund construction of a long life asset like a bridge is um, the normal acceptable yeah, practice. Same thing, though. So if, we, if we're using, if we get ahead of the game, we have a target rate. We've got something to pay back with them. Well, you, you fund, my, my understanding, and I hope I've been learning well, is you oh. fund, you fund your, um, your principal payments back using your depreciation and your rate for the interest. Keep so good. Is that it? <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, but I, mean, I guess. It's absolutely right. So we rate in our operational for the interest costs, and we use the depreciation, which we can rate for, to repay more um, principal. But you don't hit the rate payer with both. This would be unfair. To say well, one. we haven't yeah. though, have we? Because we haven't really been depreciating, so it's actually well, much easier to borrow. Yeah. Correct. Well, it's regardless of whether we depreciate yeah. or not, because you're borrowing to manage cash flow. That's right. So the assumption, so, yeah. which you get the cash back in and you clear your debt. Yeah. So if I'm using your uh, example you've just given us now. That would mean that at the end of life we borrow again. Correct. There's no Absolutely. appreciation funds in there. No. Well, given that some of these might keep another 100 year life, That's right. and you're only probably going to borrow no, a 30 year it. term, you will have paid the debt off and have accumulated some depreciation. And I guess to me, that's you talked to before, we had a 0% return on the money you're sitting in the bank, it would be cheaper to invest that in infrastructure and you'd be saving 20% year on year. Uh, but I mean, I, and, and I guess the, the part gone. The part is it's big ticket items. It's intergenerational, so borrowing is a logical way. Correct. It's just at what level and and what. And I agree that we need to have the contractors and with the we need to engage with the contracts as well. We need, this is a big it's a big issue. So everyone's got to be involved. We're all involved with the future, whether we're borrowing, whether they've got depreciation, but we've got to do something because we can't really. I don't want to be a part of a council that's accused of not doing infrastructure development. We're doing it in wastewater, we're doing it in waste, we're doing it everywhere else. So we've got to make sure we're doing it. Good business. It is, and that's how yeah, we're not getting much help out of the government, but the government change, we're getting close to the election. We've seen that before where money's been offered up and it could be an increase in subsidy from, from road and more for infrastructure. We've seen that with water. Definitely we've seen it with water. The, the best chance for success for getting the money from government is to have really good information mm. around the bridges that we're putting up for funding. So understanding the economic implications, they don't just carry trucks, but they carry yeah. this level of product that at this value. Yeah. This is a community that's really isolated. So that bridge between that lets neighbours actually see neighbours without having to drive for half an hour is really important. And so that's why we would um, utilise Saskia's team, Alex, to help write the strategy because, and that's been part of the problem is, um, I can say this, you know, but I have utmost admiration for engineers. They don't always bring in that people impact into the um, equation. 
which is going to be really important in terms of telling the story of why this bridge is important. Well, it is in the long term plan for the TV Valley. Risk of history, gold mining, pastoral farming, historic, now tourism, significant heritage, and 50% of home by agriculture. Well, that's pretty much all of Central Otago, and we've grown for 5,000 people in the last five years. So if we do borrow and invest, and we grow at the same rate with our long term plan tells, there'll be a lot more rate payers we pay for the privilege of driving over bridges. And if you want to go out on your bike, like a lot of people do, and go, Mountain bike in the Naseby or Curling and Naseby or down the TV Valley Gold Pen, and you're driving over a council bridge somewhere. So everyone has got to buy into it. So, is there any announcements? That's what Lynn. No, it's just as come up with something to think about. Because it's a reconstruction of the world, there's no room there. No, so we don't insure bridges. Um, but the other thing is that um, yeah, we argued that a bridge that was at its end of life. Insurance for principle of betterment. <laughs> yeah. Going back to the type of structures, and, and we've talked, and James did, washout culverts and forwards, but they are very cheap options relative yep. to a structure. Yep. And you just made the point we've had box culverts 50 yards down the road and beaten up, it's probably a $2,000 culvert. And put another one back in there and bury it in the hole. What I mean, and once in, the floods in the Mini Tata have been once in 15 years, so five times four or five box culverts. I mean, some of these bridges aren't big bridges, some of them are oh. and the bridges that are only as wide as the table and have now been 100 years so that they can be replaced by box culverts or taken out. Now, some will be taken out, but yeah. And look, the Petty Road, road box culvert, we would replace it with another box, box culvert. Sorry. Our Beck School Road, um, there are a series of culverts. You know, that, that's mm -hmm. probably a really good solution, but maybe concrete in over the top, it's bit so they don't wash away. Um, that, they could certainly be done with low cost um, solutions. Um, but, you know, the St. Beckham's Downs Bridge, which is the concrete bridge with the yeah. uh, deck, um, that needs another bridge. It's going to be a bridge. Mm -hmm. no, you know, um, so, the average cost is probably, you know, and I don't, I don't want to get quoted in the newspaper, but you know, could be looking at half a million dollars on average. Yeah, so if you've got eight or eleven in the first ten years, if eleven in the first ten years might be five or six million. That wouldn't be out of the realms of any no. business development no. to borrow money going forward. And as long as I guess as a council, and this is where I hope it's been a pretty stressful week. We hope we get support. I think we're all in this together, and it is a big ticket item. It's as big as surge. It is as big as water. It is as big as anything else. So. Yeah. Well, you know. Is there an issue with regional council of putting in forwards for your applicant? Um, I, I don't, I can't really answer that one categorically. Talk Look, I know they exist a lot in other places, so mm. I can't understand why it wouldn't be appropriate here. There may be some things that we had to. Have there been any, um, have we asked uh, Okaha to provide a perspective on um, river crossing? No, we haven't, and that would be part of what because that would be some of the partnership agreement work that we do with them. Is well, that would be, yeah. if we did that, that would be a step in the right direction for um, going to the yeah. IRC. So, yes. a, a staff member, we're going to have strip set on their own place, and we've got that person now, have we got the person employed? Uh, uh, yes, we haven't talked to them about it yet. <laughs> 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 and I guess, I, and I guess, part of I've found, and it may just be me, is it's been a them and us with council and staff. We're not. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And then you've you've taken a fair bit of heat. I must admit, in all the meetings down the Mangaroa, and well done. You've been you've been pretty resilient and standing up to it. And you've given good answers every time in the sense and the, and the report's been great so credit to you and we'll miss you out of our roading team when you do your next bit but it is a big ticket item and it's always going to be controversial frictional in, in rural communities when they feel they pay a lot of rates and then all of a sudden they lose infrastructure but that's just the way we are but we've got to move on we've got to come up with solutions and that's what we're here for to make the hard decisions and get solutions right any other discussion So we'll go back to the recommendation of 
Well, the prisoner of cancer received that from A, B, C, D, E, right through to L. Um, we're going to move into the. Move and move. Mr. McKinley, seconder. Yep. Mr. Jeffrey. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you very much, Julie. But, you know, it's a big thing, and I hope for this council on the next one, we, we get there, but we need the help from government. And we need our communities to understand too, and, and passing that information on to them, I think, is massively important, so they know what's going on. Because some of them in our court definitely feel like they haven't been told. But there's been a lot of work, and there will be a lot of work done in the future to try to get this over the line. So, correct. Thanks, Stu. Um, I think I'm right in saying that the only thing left on the public agenda is the date of the next meeting, which is on page 712, which is now the 6th of July. Sure, it's been a lot of building. Hey, I'm on top of it. <laughs> Um, and that's all we have. So I'm going to move that we um, move into non-public for the reasons that can be found somewhere in the agenda. <laughs> you second that, Stephen? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Oh, okay. Aye. Again, to carry it, just while we swap the signs around and then you have a stitch leaves. I don't think we need a break just yet. Who would be interested in watching that? 